my mama I'm meeting with y'all, so if I don't walk out of here, she gonna know it was you. Ain't nothing left for you on the south side, man. Maybe it's time to go. So this is something we're gonna circle back round to in just a moment. Because Power have a history of throwing us down the wrong alley when we're trying to figure out who the real snitch is or what's happening in particular plots or stories. So just keep Warrell in the back of your minds because I do want to run through a different theory and a different perspective. So with that being said, every single episode has a theme and where Power Book 2 goes generally had references to books and topics in the classroom which set the foundation for the theme of season 2. Raising Kanan's theme for this season is the ties that bind and with all of the relationships which are still strained and there being no room for emotion in the street game, the first two episodes of season 2 really did epitomize the theme. We're looking at broken relationships with the Thomas family and especially with Rock trying to hold on to her relationship with Kanan. But where we talk about there being no room for emotions, Rock showed exactly why you need to be ice cold, whether you disagree or agree with her decision. And I think majority of us sit in the same boat. It was the wrong one. But you can't deny, the manner in which she killed Scrappy without him even having a chance to explain showed ruthlessness and also her loyalty is now dead. She killed the man who saved Lulu and hired the man who tried to kill him. Make that make sense. And this is what the ultimate theme was for episode 2, lies and loyalty now being dead and how there are no more friends in the streets. Come on man, ain't no friends out here on these streets. So we saw Rock killing Scrappy, Hire Warrell, Unique was betrayed by his soldiers and it shows, it really is about self-preservation. All of these characters will always do what's best for themselves and Rock didn't want any of them ending up in prison because of a rat in their organization and after watching episode 1 over again, it was ironic Rock's money was being chewed up by rats. And put some more traps down. I would have to change them 10 times a day. Call exterminator Juliana. So Juliana mentioned no matter how many traps she puts down, the rats will keep on coming back. And was this a direct nod to even if Rock took out the supposed rat within her organization, she'll not only get rid of the wrong one, but she can't put out the fire unless she gets an exterminator and takes out every single one of them. And is Rock her own exterminator? And is this what Detective Howard wants? We all know how he wants to protect Kanan, but did he knowingly give misinformation to Rock, knowing she has to exterminate her entire organization one by one, just like the rats did in the bodega? And with the reference I just gave about not being able to get rid of the rats, it really would be ironic if Rock actually hired the real rat, Warrell. I likened his character to Dre in a previous video because he was someone who regularly flipped sides and also turned into a snitch. And a comment from B-Money really is worth considering. You think it could be Warrell? He was arrested in episode 1. He asked Unique to leave town, maybe because an indictment is coming. He said he told his mom he was going to meet Rock, probably meaning the cops. And it definitely is a theory worth considering because we all know how power love a twist by making us think one thing. For example, leading us down the road with Scrappy's mom being the CI, which she very well may be because she made reference to Detective Peng. But could they throw us a twist with the real one being Warrell? So it definitely is a theory worth considering, especially because I think Rock has made a huge mistake in bringing Warrell in and how she could be the creator of her own downfall, ironically killing Scrappy, who was a supposed snitch, but bringing in the real one, Warrell. And from Rock's perspective, what proof did Rock really have that Scrappy was a snitch, apart from the word of a dishonest cop who was the father of her child, but someone she tried to kill? Lou was also adamant he wasn't a snitch and made a point of how he bled for Rock. Marvin didn't really get much evidence in terms of him being a snitch, only that he was lying about his whereabouts from the night before, which didn't help his cause but wasn't enough. So for a guy who'd been in their organization since he was 14 years of age, you would have thought she would have at least got some more solid intel, but instead, she recruited the man who tried to kill Lou and killed the man who saved Lou's life in season 1. And this is what we mean by loyalty being dead for Rock. And it really would be ironic if she did employ the actual rat, Warrell. Now, not only do I think Warrell will be a problem, regardless of whether he's the rat or not, Rock will have an issue in episode 3 because everything in the bodega will be taken, with possibly Juliana as well. So, with the focus being on the snitch in episode 2, Rock and her organization took one eye off Unique. So, with that being said, let's have a look at the loyalty aspect and where Unique finds himself on his own. Lou Thomas. 
behind enemy lines like a motherfucker. And this was a stark reality Unique was now facing. He's got no money, no soldiers, no drugs, and the Detective Howard shooting really has changed the game because he's still on the radar of the NYPD and now nobody wants to be associated with Unique, especially not Dean. And Unique's never heard the word no much and you could tell, he doesn't take rejection very well from Dean and especially Worrell. Worrell flipped over to Rock's side and so did everybody else because with Rock and her Colombian connect, Joaquin, she's got the control over Unique's old territory, the projects and soon to be the 40s. And with Unique playing checkers, this wasn't done by accident. Throughout Power and Raising Kanan, we've seen characters play chess and it just shows where Unique is at this moment in time. He's in no position to be 3 moves ahead of his enemy, he's out of options and he's stuck. But when someone like Unique is down and has nothing more to lose, that's when he's the most dangerous. Which is why even though Rock is at the top of the game and where she finished season 1 as the queen, I really do hope we see a role reversal with Unique finishing on the top of the game in season 2. Because after episode 2, I do sit in a position where I actually do feel sorry for Unique, especially after the shit Rock has been doing. And considering Unique was someone who is more than fair in season 1, he kept to his agreement he had with High Post on territory. He then let Rock have the territory she demanded. He also wasn't the one who started the war. And even though he is supposed to be the villain, I actually find myself rooting for Unique to get back on his feet. And when and if he does rob the bodega in episode 3, he's gonna be sitting on a boatload of cash, but nothing to do with it because no connect will fuck with him. So what's his next move? Does he start to work with the Italians or does he carry on creating problems for Rock on these streets? Because that's the one thing he will promise. If he can't do any business, he's gonna try his damn hardest to fuck up Rock and her organization. So let's see what Unique's next move is. Now, considering we're on the theme of loyalty being dead, Jessica and Lou's relationship was doomed before it even started. She made a point of how she's always on her time and how she's gonna do what's best for her. Again, self-preservation. And there was a clue in season 1 that Crown and Jessica's relationship actually goes back even further than we first saw. Marvin told Lou how Crown was all up in Jessica and at the time, he just overheard a phone call between Duke and Famous. But it actually does make sense and it did turn out to be true. So there really was no loyalty to begin with in this relationship. Not from Jessica anyway. But that's a breakdown of how episode 2 showed a theme of lies and loyalty being dead and how I find myself actually rooting for Unique rather than Rock. But could Rock actually ironically have created the demise of her own organization? Does she think she's got rid of the snitch only to hire the real one, Worrell? It's definitely worth considering, especially because we know how power love a twist. But drop all your thoughts down below and of course if you are new to the channel and you haven't done so already, then remember to smash the subscribe button if you want to see everything Power Book 3 and Power Universe related. But as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.